All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about Can, a Taiwanese company, a nation in a country not even really known for um, being into bushcrafting or the wilderness, can they actually make a good bushcrafting knife? And here's why I think they can. So before we get into this, what you're looking at is the WTG or Work Tough Gear. Um, this is their Forester. So this is a small newer release, but by and large, Work Tough Gear likes to make a lot of um, smaller bushcrafting oriented knives. They even make this knife in a Scandinavian grind. I have the um, just normal flat grind or um, saber grind, if you want to call it that, version of this guy. They make this knife very much positioned towards bushcrafters, and I think that this knife definitely is very much positioned in that way. And I think it's actually pretty good to be honest. And here is why a knife company and in a place, a, a country or in a nation or whatever you want to call them that isn't even known for bushcrafting can do a really good job of making bushcrafting and for that matter, survival knives. And that is because Work Tough Gear is a very cool company as I've talked about before when going over their survival knife that they make essentially these semi-custom production runs where they work with people and and this one's no exception, that have a lot of experience in the field and a lot of experience going into the wilderness. They know what they need, they know what they want in a knife, and they can come to Work Tough Gear and have small production runs made of that knife so that not only can that end user, the designer of that knife, get a knife that they want, but also have residual to sell out to the world to give other people that really good, really well-made knife. And I think that this one overall, granted, I haven't had any dirt time with it just yet because it is still unfortunately winter, still recovering from some health issues and still need to get out outside. But uh, this guy, like I've said in previous videos, I've handled many, many bushcrafting knives and used a lot of bushcrafting knives for the past decade. So I can pretty easily just like pick up a knife and be like, okay, that, this is either going to work or it's not going to work. Like I can know pretty much instantaneously. And this one definitely is um, one that I fully believe would work. Of course, I can't guarantee. It might break the first time I put on it, but um, for the most part, there is nothing here that indicates that this is poorly made. And uh, more than that, it is also really smartly made in a few ways. So first off, I really do love, and granted this is slightly more tertiary, but I really do love, if the camera will focus, this integral lanyard hole here. So you guys can hopefully see the lanyard hole is recessed back here. And of course you have cutouts um, right here, very reminiscent of Survive Knives and what they do with the GSO 5.1 and others, where they bury that um, lanyard hole in the handle. So it still gives you a very full handle towards the back and keeps that lanyard hole kind of out of the way to avoid any hot spots. So it's very well made. And of course the designer of this knife, um, knew what they were doing when they did that. Now, other things that are pretty cool is they do have, of course, side cutouts. You don't see these as frequently anymore in bushcrafting knives, but even traditional knives like, um, or maybe not quite traditional, but older school knives like the Topps Fieldcraft had side cutouts for doing things like um, chest levers. So when you hold your knife here, you, know, you put your thumb, sorry, I'll have to rotate here. You hold your knife like this and you hold it like this. You know, you can do a chest lever and get a lot of leverage if you're trying to do a mass material reduction say you're trying to shave something down to make a you know deadfall trap or you're trying to make a tent peg or you just need to take down a lot of material on a piece of wood a lot of times it's easier to use your chest muscles um, your kind of like pectoral muscles and really do a chest lever to help cut so having cutouts like these on both sides um, whether you're right or left-handed give you that ability to really get a deep uh, grip on the side of the knife and use it in that type of manner so pretty smart you don't like say you don't often see these on bushcrafting and survival knives anymore um, but if they're well done they don't add a significant hot spot when you're holding the knife in a standard fashion, um, but they do really help. In addition to this too, the spine has been sharpened. I don't know if you guys can hear it super well, but it is very sharp, very tacky, so you can easily strike ferro rods with the spine. It's also made out of about an eighth of an inch thick piece of SK85. So what that means is that this is about a 1083, 1085 um, typed knife and um, or for steel wise. And so you're getting about um, a little bit less edge retention than 10 
95, but a little bit better shock resistance and toughness overall in the steel. It's gonna be more prone to rolling as opposed to breaking. And so um, take that for what it's worth. It's not the best, but also too, these are reasonably value oriented knives. I say reasonably because uh, these knives do cost about 150 to $120. Um, and so some people may not, or they may think that's a little bit high, but as I talked about in previous videos, when you consider that they are custom making, you know, Kydex sheaths for these knives, they're custom, they're taking a design, making small batch runs. The fact that they're actually able to keep these as cheap as they do is pretty impressive when you consider that, like I said, they have to work with a designer um, to, you know, design the knife. Then they have to source the, the uh, materials, of course, which is fairly easy, but then they have to make these designs unique, and then of course make these designs unique to these sheaths. You've even seen a lot of other companies that do similar styles to this, companies like Bark River and Tops, where they use fairly generic sheaths that will just fit a knife of that size. And so the fact that Work Tough Gear is making each and every knife um, custom with, you know, like a quality kydex sheath that is custom fit to those knives is more impressive than you might initially think so in my opinion like i said the whole production side of this and the fact that they're able to keep these you know sub 200 dollars is something that i think is pretty darn impressive especially with the materials i mean once again you got g10 you got kydex you got 10, um, 1085 essentially as your steel um, so not nothing like super super amazing over the top this isn't like cpm 3v or anything wild but it is still quality materials and quality designs. And I think this is what gives Work Tough Gear the ability to not necessarily independently and in and of themselves make really good bushcrafting knives, but the fact that they work with people who have a good amount of field time, good amount of experience in the world, and a good amount of dirt time in um, <clears throat> in bushcrafting survival in different environments, different climates, in different ecosystems, gives them the ability to make some very quality knives. I really do like this one in particular. It is very reminiscent of, I would say, a GSO, um, I wanna say like 4.0. Um, so it is very reminiscent in its overall build and kind of styling, but significantly cheaper and also significantly more accessible, at least for now, because these are done in small production runs. So keep that in mind that, you know, the biggest pro is also kind of the biggest con to work tough gear. And that is that they make small production runs. And once they've done that production run, it's done. Unlike not unlike companies like Bark River and Tops that use similar kind of ideas to this, um, Work Tough Gear has no legacy or no you know just um, evergreen kind of knives. They strictly make um, batch batches of knives, and once that batch is finished, it's finished. Once it's sold, it's sold. So keep that in mind. Um, that's part of what keeps the prices cheaper with Work Tough Gear. But if you do see a design that you like, I would highly encourage picking it up because, like I said, there's no legacy um, knife designs from Work Tough Gear. What you see is what you get, and if you miss out on it, it's likely gone. So that's like I said, the biggest con in my opinion to work tough gear is they do some really good work. I just really wish I would like them. I would like to see in the future at least one or two legacy models, like one really solid push crafting legacy model and one really solid survival legacy model that if you you know want a, a knife from them and you want something that's a good bush crafting knife, you can go and get that legacy model. Or if you want that survival knife, you can go and get that legacy model. I'd really like to see that because like I said previously, even top like with the uh, Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft. That is a now legacy model with tops. They keep it around, they keep production up. And even with companies like Bark River Knives, they keep the Bushcrafter um, is, as a legacy model. So they did start as limited runs and initially they were made in batches similar to Work Tough Gear, but they brought those specific designs. Not every design that Tops makes and not every design that Bark River makes are strict legacy models, but it's nice to have legacy models for people who are interested in getting a quality um, knife and it also makes my job as a gear reviewer tester and just overall YouTube uh, knife enthusiast much easier because then I can more easily recommend um, companies like work tough gear at this point I, I do recommend them but it's just that like I said kind of that issue where it's like I really like this Forrester I think it's a really great knife and I think that people would enjoy 
owning one of these, but if you watch this video, you know, even six months from now, the fact of the matter is this probably won't be available to buy anymore. And so for me, that makes it kind of frustrating because I don't mind covering, you know, like these limited edition knives, but at the same time too, it's nice to have companies that have legacy knives that you guys can go and purchase at any time. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless and I'm out.